Welcome to Chapter 2. Unit 2, this is all about integers and representing integers is our lesson. Um, integers are the second half of numbers that you have not yet been introduced to, though you did get a little look at them in grade 6. <coughs> grade 6, sorry, grades, in grade 7 we're going to go much further. Now we just did lesson 1.8 before you did your unit final, and in that lesson you were introduced to algebra tiles, but you should have noticed that everything was positive. Now what we have to do is we have to start introducing you to integers, the negative sides of numbers, so that you can uh, use those to solve negative numbers, because that's basically the other half of numbers in the world. So it says here the objective is students will be introduced to the concept of negative numbers. They will learn to order integers and to represent integers using an integer, uh, sorry, an integer tiles. And we're also going to look a little bit more at the number lines so you get an idea of where things are located and how to order them. You're also going to learn what's called the zero principle. So, to begin, when you were one or two or three, whatever, when you first started learning to count, your mom would hold up fingers and hold and go one, hold up one finger and you go one, or she'd hold up two fingers and you go two, and, and you would say, you know, what you saw. And these were called the natural numbers. Once you were comfortable with counting one, twos, and threes, then your mom probably held up her hand and had all the fingers closed in a fist, and you didn't have anything to count. And that was your first introduction to the concept of zero. And because zero is such an important uh, number, they've decided to give it its own uh, name. So when you include zero with the natural numbers, they call this um, whole numbers. A little bit extra work that's not required, but I guess they wanted to do that. So then as you were grew up, you were introduced to the concept of less than zero. So this could be that you owed somebody some money, but more than likely it came around here in the concepts of temperatures below zero being negative five degrees or above zero being positive five degrees. So we went to having uh, in subtraction, we were always taught, you were always taught that the larger number had to always be in front. So you had 12 take away seven, which gave you five. Now we have to sort of turn that around and tell you that now it's possible to have seven take away 12 and have a number go below zero to negative five. So we're going to be working with that also. So how do we explain negative numbers? Well, it is three degrees outside. The temperature goes down four degrees. It's going to go down three till it gets to zero. And then one more degree, so now we're below zero at negative one. Or you have three dollars and you owe four dollars. So when you paid off your debts, you would still, when you get rid of the $3 you had, you still owe $1 to somebody, so you're still down $1 or negative $1. Or you're on the third floor of a building and you go down four floors. If you count the ground floor as zero, now you're one floor below ground, probably in the parking lot, or underground parking, so you're at negative one floors. So these are all integers. So let's define integers for you. An integer is a number that has two parts. And this is important because I'm going to ask you this on almost every quiz and test that you're going to get in the next couple of years. The first part is what we refer to as a sign. It shows which side of the zero a whole number is on. Okay? We have two signs. We have a positive and we have a negative. Okay? So the positive which is a plus sign, is on the right of the zero. And the negative, which is a negative sign, is on the left. Now I said there's two parts. That's the first part, the sign. The second part is um, what we call the magnitude or the number. Now we use the word magnitude. magnitude. If you want to use number, you can use that too. All right. And this tells you how far from the zero the number is. So if it is a negative four, that means that it's negative, which means it's going to be on the left hand side of the zero, and it's going to be four units from this zero. So we're going to work with that in the next couple of uh, incidences here. 
excuse me, I just had to have a big cough, so I didn't want to cough into the microphone. Okay, so on the next page, you'll see negative 4, okay, and it is 4 units to the left of the 0. Positive 5, because it's a positive, it's going to be on the right, so it is 5 units to the right of the 0. Now, if you take a look at a number line, you'll see here's my negative 4 over here. So because it's on the left, it is actually 1, 2, 3, 4 units to the, left, to the left of the 0. The 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units to the right. And it's positive. That's how come you know it goes to the right. The negative tells you that you're going to go to the left. So let's back up a little bit. When you were in grade 6, you did some ordering. So I'm going to give you a couple seconds. I want you to place these integers on this number line at their correct locations. So pause the recording and then do that, and then I will show you the correct answer. Okay. First off, negative 5. Knowing that it's a negative, it's going to be on this side because that's your negative side, and it is 5 units. So you can count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here is where negative 5 is. Okay, I'm going to erase the track here so that I can do the next one. Negative 6 is on negative, which means it's on the left, and it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here is negative 6. Now positive 5 is on the right-hand side, and it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here is where your positive 5 should be. Positive 2 is 2 jumps to the right, so 1, 2, here is your positive 2, and we've got a 3 here. Now, when you first look at 3, it looks like there is no sign there, and that's true. Whenever you encounter a number that does not have a sign, it means that it's positive. So a 3 is equal to positive 3. So then bubble jumping over, 1, 2, 3. Here is where your positive 3 goes. Positive 6 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's your positive 6. And negative 1 is now negative. It's going the other direction. Here is your negative 1 right here. It is 1 bubble jump to the left. So you should, oops, sorry, I wrote a 5 here. I should have written a 6. Okay. So there is what your numbers should be located at, where your numbers should be located. Okay, now using the number line or whichever way you wish, I want you to take these numbers right here and I want you to put them in order from least, which means smallest, to greatest. So pause the recording and do the first one and then stop and we'll make sure you did it right before we go on to B and C. Okay, so now let's take a look. We know that as you go to this direction over here, the numbers are going to get larger. So we're looking for the largest negative number. Now this is where it gets kind of weird. The largest negative number is actually the smallest. So negative 12 is the smallest number that there is. And once you've got that done, you can put a line through it so you don't mix it up. Now you want to look for the next largest negative number. That's the negative 4. So you should have negative 4 next. And followed by negative 3. So that brings us to the positive numbers. Now you'll notice that we started with the negatives, the larger number is 12, and as we're going this way, they're getting smaller. Okay, That means that the numbers are actually getting larger because we're moving to the right-hand side. As you move towards this direction up here on your number line, this is getting larger. So in fact, negative 3 is larger than negative 4, even though the negative 3 is a smaller magnitude. Okay. Now going to the positive numbers, you have positive 4, which is the next one, and then I've got a positive 7, and then a positive 15. So, if you did them correctly, great. If not, take a look at what you did wrong and try to reason it out. If not, back it up and watch what I've done over here. And uh, now I want you to do B and C. Okay, so pause the recording and do letters B and C. Okay, we'll come back. Biggest negative number, negative 14. Let's just carry that one. 
Next biggest number, negative 4, followed by 0, followed by 4, and then finally, positive 14. For C, the largest negative number is negative 34. That means it's the smallest. Then comes negative 3. Then comes positive 5. Finally, by 67, which is positive. So there's how you put them in order. Okay? To better understand integers, we're going to take the tiles that we used at 1.8, and we're going to use those to add them now. So this is our next step. Now that you know how to put them in order, and we've done a review of grade, seven, grade 6, our next step now is to move on to grade 7. And grade 7 has you adding them. So, going back to 1.7, 1.8, we're going to be doing uh, representing integers now. Now, you notice that I now have a clear tile right here, and I have a dark tile. Okay. Now, we use the filled-in ones to represent the negative. Think of them as being negative, bad, dark side, Okay, these ones are clear, good, positive, side. So when I want to represent a number using positive tiles, I'm going to use these just like we did when we were doing um, the stuff in Lesson 1.8 with algebra tiles when we worked with just 2x equals 4 or something of that nature. So if you take a look in your textbook, the textbook is kind of nice because it's in color. The textbook uses a yellow tile to represent positive 1 and a red tile to represent negative 1. So when you see them in the textbook, they, they'll be in color. So let's do the first one. Using tiles to represent the following integers. Now, because it's positive, it's going to be clear and open. And there are two of them. So to represent this, this is what it's going to look like. There's the first one. There's the second one. That is positive 2. Positive 1 plus positive 1. To look at the negative tiles, you've got 1, 2, Three, very similar to what we did already. Okay, so quickly pause the recording and do negative five and positive four, and then we'll quickly check it. Okay, negative five is one, two, three, four, five, positive four, one, two, three, four. There you go. Okay, so the next step is called the zero principle, and that's a clue to the question that I'm, that I'm going to ask you. What happens when you place a negative number? and it's opposite together. Okay. Now, if you think of the number line, all right, we have 0 in the middle, we have positive 1 here, we have negative 1 there. When you put this and this together, and they average out, guess where you end up? 0. So, when you take and put a positive tile and a negative tile together, when you group them, they're going to give you a 0. Now, believe it or not, this is called the zero principle. And then we're going to use that when we add tiles. <coughs> so, here we go. You may get them in groups of two. You may get them in groups of four, five, six, whichever. doesn't matter. As long as you can put equal number of tiles together, which are positive and negative, you're going to get zero. So, for example, if I take all of these and take a look at them separately, this here is going to give me zero. When I do this one here, it's going to give me also zero. And I can group them in pairs individually, or I can put them together as a group. Two positives, two negatives still give me equal numbers of positive and negatives. So it doesn't matter how I put them together. A zero and a zero still gives me a zero. So when we're canceling out, this is what this is referred to. It's when you cancel out your zeros, your positives and negatives, you equal equal number of tiles, they get a zero. You can do them as individually, as pairs, or if you want to group them up as in large groups, you can too. But the zero principle states that when you have equal numbers of positive integers, I'm sorry, of opposite integers, when you have equal numbers of opposite integers, opposite meaning some positive and some negative, they always sum, which means the addition, to be 0. So, let's see if you can get some practice here. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll do the first one, show the value of negative 2 using tiles in more than one way. So negative 2, we know, is like this. There is negative 2. Not a problem. 
I put brackets around it because that's a habit we're going to get into later. Now, if I want to show negative 2 again, all I have to do is make sure that I have negative 2, but I'm going to put with it a 0. Now, look at this. Here's the negative 2 here, and this is a 0. So negative 2, and you add a 0 to it, you stick at negative 2, because when you add or subtract a 0 to anything, it stays as negative 2. So I can draw a negative 2 as many ways as I want, as long as, when I'm done, everything which is a 0 goes away. And I have two solid tiles left. So I'd like you to draw me negative 2 here in a different, sorry, separately to what I've just done there. So do it another way. Pause the recording, do it, and then I'll do it for you. Okay, negative 2. So here's my negative, my negative 2, 1 and 2, and now I'm going to make some pairs of 0. There's my first pair of zeros. There's my next pair of zeros, or pair of tiles that makes a 0, and here. Now when you take a look at this, it looks like a lot of tiles, but look at this. This is a 0, that's a 0, that's a 0, so the reality is they're gone. They don't exist because they're zeros. What do I have left? Negative 2. So, do it another way down below here. Okay. Now, again, negative 2. Like this. Oops, a kind of bad negative. Here we go. Negative 2. There's negative 2. And the next one is a 0. Now, there's my zero pair. What I'm going to do is I'm going to group these, and then I'm going to turn them into that. So now, I've got negative 2 and a zero, and another zero, and another zero, and I can keep adding zeros as long as I want here. It won't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as I keep zeros coming in, I'm never going to change the amount that's there. So what I really have here is negative 2, right here, and all of this, because there's an equal number of negatives and positive tiles, they equal zero. So I've drawn negative two. Oh, it's kind of a complicated, a lot of work, but in the end, I have negative two here. Okay. Now, how does this um, work out? Well, first off, you're going to do your, your uh, representing of tiles in the assignment, and then we're going to step into 2.1 which is the actual addition. So complete the assignment, and uh, we'll see you next lesson.